I'm free now. And your turn. No, no, no. I just knew all what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my channel. <laughs> me, you guys. Pregnancy vlog too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. What are we doing? I don't know. I I, I like to be happy. <gasps> Me too, buddy. And I, and I love some some toys. I I like some little yogurts too. You like some toys and you like some yogurts too? Yeah. And and I like soy. You, you what? I like soy. It's so to see. Celery. Celery? Yeah. You like to eat celery? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm very very serious. And I also love eggs. You want some egg? Sure. Mmm, yum. So we're just having a little dinner. And because I'm still in my werewolfy phase, where? Yeah. That's right. Where I can't really eat much, I'm just having a salad. No way. Oh, and yeah. And, I, and I'm eating yogurt. It's very, very yummy. Yeah. And for protein i'm just having some hard boiled eggs oh yeah that's all i can eat why is my nose so oily i like my eggs and i like dinner i like breakfast i like some cereal and i and i love my toys and flowers i like to smell some flowers so i'll be happy kiss yeah kiss buddy kiss kissy baby oh my yeah. kiss baby do you think it's a baby baby boy or a baby girl? Mm, baby girl. Baby girl, just like me? Yeah, it just turned to a baby boy. Now it's a baby girl. Before you said it was baby boy, right? Yeah. And now it turned to baby girl? Yeah. Mm, does that work? Um, I don't think so. I just think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Okay guys, so it is March 19th right now and today I believe is my 14 week and a half. So just wanted to show you a little bit of what my bump looks like right now. Oh, before I do that, let me show you my studio because I just finished a spring haul. And this is what the room looks like right now. Okay, it doesn't look very messy. I promise you, it was really messy when I was filming. I feel like from the front, um, there isn't too much of a difference, but you can definitely see from the side. Baby's about right here, and I think baby's the size of a lemon right now. So I just posted the Instagram story with the bump and I captioned it, Baby K says hi and <laughs> you guys flooded my DMs with questions. You were like, have you named your baby? Do you know the gender? Is it, is it going to start with the letter K? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I honestly didn't really think much before posting that caption. I actually meant Baby K as in baby of Karina. <laughs> Oh my god. To be honest, my brain cells are kind of dying um, at this very point. So I'm not sure if that made sense, but it made a lot of sense to me in my brain before I posted that caption for some reason. If you want to see more baby bump updates, make sure to follow my Instagram because I post a lot of baby bump updates on my stories. So yesterday I just got off the phone with my doctor and we have decided to take a test in Canada called the NIPT test, which is the non-invasive prenatal test, I believe. It's just a simple blood test that will tell you the odds of having a baby with a chromosomal disorder. I don't think the results are going to affect us and our decision very much, but I just really, really want to get that peace of mind because with Lucas, some of you guys might have known this, he was actually born with a heart defect at four months. From the moment when he was born up until four months, he was jaundiced and that's normal for a lot of newborns, especially for like the first couple of days of their 
life. But for Lucas, it was a prolonged period of jaundice and that was definitely not normal. Doctors all over Ontario, Toronto, where I live, could not figure out what was wrong with him because he was not gaining weight, he was not thriving, he was not eating properly. So he was like the skinny little yellow baby for the first four months of his life and it's just really sad to think about. A lot of the doctors back then actually thought that he had a condition that relates to his liver in his bile duct called biliary atresia because that is one of the most common causes of prolonged jaundice. So with biliary atresia, it is a pretty fatal and deadly disease where it cannot be treated with medicine. The only way to kind of prevent it from getting worse is to undergo a surgery procedure and even the most like experienced surgeon in the world can only guarantee a 50% to 60% success rate for that specific surgery. And even if that surgery turned out to be successful, your child will have a very, very high chance of needing a liver transplant sometime later in his life. So yeah, I just felt like the odds were not in my favor with Buddy. Thankfully, a random doctor that we went to at around three months time decided to take a look at his heart instead and thought that hmm, maybe this jaundice is caused by his heart instead of the bile duct. And then with that diagnosis, we started to move towards an open heart surgery. So we booked that for him when he was four months old. I remember very clearly this was Valentine's Day. So it was February 14th, 2017. And we were in SickKids Hospital in Toronto where our four month old was undergoing open heart surgery. So it's all very overwhelming to think about. And so he's fine now, but he had to be in the hospital for about four months because after the open heart surgery he got all the complications that you can ever think of not a fun memory so yeah this is something that i wouldn't wish upon my worst enemies to witness your child being sick and for a long period of time not knowing what's wrong with him or what you can do to save him anyway so fast forward to Today, we are going to do the NIPT test for baby number two just to have this peace of mind that everything is okay. And baby number two is also going to have a fetal echocardiogram because Lucas was born with a heart defect, so this baby gets to be screened for a heart defect as well. I'm just praying that everything will be okay. So yeah, at this point, I really don't care if it's a boy or a girl, I just want baby to be healthy and to not go through what Lucas did in the first year of his life because that was just that was just terrible. Speaking of whether baby is going to be a boy or a girl, can I be honest with you guys? I know a lot of you guys, me included, you know, want baby number two to be a girl just so I have a boy and a girl and buddy will be the best big brother and be there for baby girl as they're both growing up but I just want to say that gender disappointment is a real thing and I don't want to disappoint you guys because I know the majority I think like over 90% are rooting for a girl this time and it's just like even though I can't control it I want to produce a girl for ourselves for you guys and I don't want you guys to be disappointed I know that sounds really weird but it's a real feeling that I have these days and I don't know how to put it accurately into words so that's the best way I can describe it. So in reality, I, I know that nothing much will change. I'm still going to love baby just the same whether it's boy or girl. I don't want to disappoint you guys even. Ah! Guys, I have like really good news. So. I don't know if it's because I'm into the second trimester now because I'm currently 20 weeks but do you guys remember my acne problem that I talked about in my first trimester video so I have like crazy amount of acne here and around my neck as well and I asked you guys what the most effective acne treatment for pregnancy was and lots of you gave me really good ideas and I've started to try out a couple of products so my new current skin routine uh, morning and night is to use the skin SkinCeuticals Simply Clean Gel. So I have been using this guy for about like two and a half years now straight and it's just a really effective, really gentle cleansing wash for my face. And during the times when I was breaking out here, I, I kept using it, but it wasn't like it was like helping a big deal. So I got the SkinCeuticals Blemish and Age Defense. 
Oh my god, I just like ate Cheetos on my hands. So this would be what's new to my skincare routine right now and I just find that it really helps to calm the acne down, especially like the raging ones that I was having and I double checked with my doctor and she said that it was completely fine to use like the ingredients in here are not harmful for babies so I've been using this in addition to the Silly Marin CF okay, if I'm pronouncing it wrong Someone help me because I don't really know how to pronounce it. I just pronounce it Silly Marin. And these are not sponsored, by the way. Like, I just always have been using them. And these are the two ones that I've tried. And I think it works really well. And I've also started to um, amp up on the usage of my sunscreen. Oh my god, sunscreen is super, super important even for non-pregnancy. So I've been using this one. I'll be linking it down below. This is the one that I've also been using for like years if you guys follow me on instagram then you know that this is like all i use for my face sunscreen for the body sunscreen i kind of switch it up between neutrogena and aveeno from time to time depending on like what i have at the moment but this one is like the only facial sunscreen i use and it looks like this so it's like a white paste but when you put it on it's actually very very much like a watery based lotion gel almost it's so absorbent i'm so sorry because i was doing some self tanning yesterday and this is what happens you know it's kind of like cheeto hands uneven but yeah so basically you just like rub it around for a few seconds and it's all absorbed and yeah that's been helping a lot i've also been using the mike clarence recharge coconut water um night mask it says here it's a night mask it smells so good like it smells like a mixture of flowery coconut water and I'm almost done. I've been using it for the past um, few months now and I just find that it really like calms my skin down. Okay, now on to the more exciting stuff. So this is what my bump looks like. I'm currently 20 weeks right now. So it looks like this. And I know a lot of you guys are curious about the... Um, the stretch mark creams that I use and the oils and stuff. So I'll be showing you. So what I've been using are these Mama Mio products. Again, these are not sponsored in any way. I have been using this even for my previous pregnancy with Lucas. And I think it's worked out pretty well because I don't have um, any stretch marks or anything from my previous pregnancy. So I currently do this routine about once every day after my shower. So right after my shower, I'll like towel dry myself really quickly and then I'll start putting the oil on so this is the first product I use this is tummy rub oil so I just use about two pumps and I'll warm it up in my hand and I'll press it into my skin like this and then I'll rub it and you really want to make sure that you get the sides here as well and the bottom here sometimes I even do the back like this in my thighs area and then while the oil is still absorbing into your skin and when your skin is still moist, I like to go in with my tummy rub butter. So this is just like a cream product that I like to layer on top of the oil to further push the moisture through, you know? So I'll do the same, pat it down, and then start rubbing it. And then lastly, I like to go in with this boob tube when they say boob tube they really just mean lotion for your boobs so i would just get like a pea-sized amount of this and just like smear it across my boobs because your boobs do grow along with your tummy during pregnancy and you just want to moisturize the skin that's been stretching so it's not like dry and itchy all the time and it promotes collagen production and elasticity but i still want to remind everyone that stretch marks are about 95% genetics. I've known people who've used a ton of stretch mark oils and creams during their pregnancy and still ended up with stretch marks. And I've also known people who didn't really put any sort of creams on their tummies during their pregnancy and they didn't even get one. So yeah, it's highly, highly genetic. And I know a lot of you guys are concerned about having stretch marks, but honestly, I feel like the society and the media has such unrealistic expectations for women in general already and if you're pregnant you definitely don't need any additional stress than what your body is probably going through anyway and it's such a beautiful thing that our body is able to perform such a miracle and what you get out of pregnancy is so so worth it than a little stretch mark here and there so definitely don't worry too much about it just remember you're a warrior you're beautiful and you're strong whether or not you have stretch marks
all right guys thanks for following along with this pregnancy vlog and i just want to point out that you guys have all been asking me about gender baby and i don't currently know gender baby but i have the results of gender baby but i haven't looked at the results yet but we will find out together in my next pregnancy vlog which is going to be a gender reveal vlog so i cannot wait to see you guys out there oh send me any questions you have about pregnancy down below bye i love you all